Sri Goswamiji, Dissimers Guests of the Days, Asha, and friends. I welcome you all to this unique meeting in Tato Loko Auditorium. It is unique because both Swamiji and Asha helped me a lot in building up Tato Loka in the initial years, and they are both present here. I approached Pooja Swamiji in the late 80s for help in my work. He was in Kwaimathur at that time, and I could see the warmth in him, and he said immediately, why do you take the trouble of doing it yourself? You come and do it with Anekati as a quarters. I'll, I'll ask my students to help you. That was, I think, was very generous. Somehow it didn't happen, uh, but Swamiji blessed me with a check. His heart is always overflowing. And without sending me empty-handed, he gave me a check from his trust, which I considered as Dachshakati <laughs> Vrha. So something that you know, I didn't expect. I wanted some introductions from him and a few words and commenting my work. But then he said, and that was a foresight, I think, as mainly because of this heartfelt blessings that we are sitting in this auditorium, which is a flowering of his blessing, actually. Coming to Asha, I know her as a research scholar in the Madras University, when I met her two decades ago. So I know her for more than 20 years. And also I met her present husband. At that time, he was also a fellow research scholar in the Madras University. I went to see Ramabai, Dr. Ramabai, head of the Sanskrit department, for some articles. Asha was present there. She readily took up the request. And I got a flood of articles in subsequent years. A fellow research scholar, as I said, B. Go, B. Go, Gopalakrishnan, he is now Dr. Ravi Sharma, well grown stager and doing a lot of surplus work apart from his main duties at the Christian College of Congress. I, I heard he, I have not been there to his satsangs yet, I heard he conducts daily satsangs to about 40, 50 people in his home. And his passion is to talk about Bhagavadam and Ramayana, Krishna and Rama being his favorite deities. I would like to go there one day and sit there quietly. I got a sampling of his talk today early in, when he introduced Swamiji. And he was studying there, doing research, and he also offered to help out Tapa Loka. And both of them chipped in on regular articles. The two together were helpful in sending articles regularly. Asha has a versatility of interest. She is a very interesting person, and she was well trained in music and dance, which is something very unusual. How many of you heard about her dance uh, talent? And I was surprised, and was also interested in mysticism, mythology, and Vedanta. Three great characteristics that helped her in achieving a fullness of the present book that was released today. Asha's articles in the 1990s in Tattva Loka bound her knowledge and proficiency in various subjects. I was stunned by the <coughs> way she handled the topics for Tattva Loka. We have to have a couple of well-researched articles in Tattva Loka. That's a guideline our Swamiji has given, Sri Bhadrita Tama Swamiji. And I've been following this meticulously. And in those early years, when I had not built up Tattva Loka, she was one of the first few pioneers who gave me wonderful articles. I want to give you some examples of her articles. You can see the range and also the, the, the depth to, from which she wrote all those articles. There was, at that time, the first 10 years, Tattva Loka was bringing out thematic issues. One issue, one theme. And we did on Shankara, on Shiva, and and the pantheon of goddesses, and so on and so forth. One of the issues was, these names were suggested by scholars, and we followed them. One of the things was Advaita in Kalidasa's poems. And Asha wrote in that, or in depicting the various achievements of Kalidasa, Natya in Malanka Nivitra. 
It was a profound study, well researched article. And then she has written Avatar Legacy of Shankara, in a way she wrote Shankara Dibhijaya. Avatar Legacy, she must have done a lot of research on that to bring out the meaning of Shankara's Avatar. And works of Shankari Acharya, that's again caused a lot of research. Shankari Acharya's works are not always available. Some of them are, like for example, Suresh Acharya's Nice Community and Topics. Like various Acharya's down the line, she, she went into the gamut of the whole thing and brought out a beautiful article for us. These articles are valuable, these issues are valuable, they almost disappeared now. But we had the good fortune of able writers at the right time supplied by Shardamba in those times. And there was one on Shakti in Tantras and Puranas, Mythological Harmon and the Harmon issue, and requisites for Alpha Vidya, and one on Nadopasana. So you can see the range she tackled for us. And they were all very well resorted. And even to this day, you can always read them and see at that young age to what extent she had plumbed into Vedanta. They all reveal a no sort of search based on the interest in these subjects. You could, you could obviously see that by reading the articles. She has been inspired by well known gurus in music, Srimadhi Sita Narayan, who is present here, and the late Srimadhi Kalpagam Swaminathan. Coming to the book, I got a ch chance to go through that in the first three lines. In a choice of Muslim Dixar's Kritis, she has brought up a deep understanding of Advaita Siddhanta with a branding of melody and mysticism. Something that is marvel for a lady to achieve in depth. And let's give her a big hand in felicitating her in the